works. If not, we'll have to kind of reconfigure things um, and see what's happening then. Okay. Well, thank you for joining me, everybody. Um, if you're new here, this is my weekly broadcast where I talk about the latest Tesla news and anything else we have going on in the Teslanomic space. Um, I'm your host, Ben Sullins, and what I'll be doing today, what I'll be sharing anyways, um, will be my long, my short, and then a few other news stories that are interesting, and then at the end we'll have a Q&A. So if you're new here and you wanted to be a part of this Q&A, the way it works is you need to go to teslanomics.co slash join, and from there you will be on our email list and you'll get the invite each week to join um, the discussion. It is capped at 100 people and it does fill up uh, almost every week. So uh, you you know kind of do need to act on that when you get that invite if you want to be part of the discussion. And for those of you that are uh, been here time and time again, thank you again for your support. Um, just coming here, showing up, asking questions, engaging, I think is really about, um, you know, the, the main idea of what we're trying to do or what I'm trying to put together for you um, with Teslanomics. So um, without further ado, just to double check on all the things, it looks like we are streaming, we're live, all the things are happening, we're good to go. The internet is in our favor today, it likes us. Um, unlike the birds that didn't like my drone earlier, for those of you following me on Twitter and saw that, um, that was a scary situation. Okay, um, so what we'll do now is I'll jump right over and then we will start sharing my screen and I need to go over to Crowdcast and do that as well because sometimes when I don't do it, you guys get real mad at me and I apologize for that. <laughs> Um, and share the screen, application window. I believe I want to share this one. Yep, you guys don't want to see the YouTube dashboard. Okay, <clears throat> we should be good. So big news, uh, my short, obviously, uh, maybe not that obviously, was that uh, the Senate in the United States, which then if you're not in the United States, there's kind of two things in Congress. Um, there's the House of Representatives and then the Senate. Um, these are essentially kind of different bodies that, that try to legislate and do things. Um, anyways, uh, long story about American history. But uh, they passed their version of the tax reform bill. And um, that means that the question of whether or not the EV tax credit, which we get $7,500 for qualifying vehicles, all Teslas qualify because they have a, a large enough battery in them, essentially. Um, this tax credit uh, could be going away. Um, and if you see my screen right now, you can see that I did a poll on YouTube, and I'm really confused by this whole thing, by the way. It's really new and kind of weird to me. Um, but on YouTube, there's this thing called community posts. And so uh, if you don't follow me on YouTube, um, make sure to go do that because you can participate in these discussions. And I'm really interested how this is going to work. It's kind of like Twitter, but it's everybody. And, and I like it a lot better than that because I'm not really good on Twitter and Twitter is not really my thing, but it's fun to kind of chat with people on there. But this is way cooler to me because it's you guys. It's everybody that follows me on YouTube. And so the folks that actually watch my videos and do everything like that. So I'm really cool, excited about this whole thing. And I asked um, uh, a day ago, <coughs> excuse me, 20 hours ago, how concerned are you about losing the EV tax credit? We got 1.2 thousand votes, so quite a few votes, and over 50% said extremely. 24% um, said not at all. And if I... Uh, I checked some of the comments. I checked a lot of the comments. A lot of the not at alls were people that didn't live in the United States where this didn't apply. So yeah, fair enough. Uh, you're right on that. Now, even on Crowdcast, um, we got about 50% that said uh, extremely. So this seems to be a major concern for a lot of folks here. Now, um, the way it works uh, was that the Senate passed their bill in the late hours on Friday night or Saturday morning, I guess. And um, they didn't even know what was in it. And there's a crazy video going around where there were literally handwritten notes on the text of the bill that were, were, weren't legible. You couldn't even read them. You couldn't, you didn't even know what they were saying. And this is what they voted on. So, um, all the Democrats voted against it. All the Republicans voted in favor of it. I believe there was one Republican that voted against it. I think it was Bob Corker. Um, could be wrong about that, um, but I believe that's, that's uh, um, the, the guy that voted against it. And it's insane. Um, it, it's insane that that uh, that they passed this in such kind of hasty manners. I mean, 
Uh, as Elizabeth Warren put it, laws in the United States or really in any country shouldn't be made this way. There should be time to debate them, time to discuss. I, and probably most citizens, would love if maybe, you know, um, the two different uh, sides here, the Democrats and Republicans, would get together and, and come up with a common ground instead of this, like, super extreme one way or the other. It's really, really bad. But long story short, you guys are concerned about it. I am concerned about it. Um, the update uh, that I've been following is on Electrek, and I'll put the link to this in the description down below. Um, there was an amendment there by, by Senator Flake, who is resigning, who was the uh, senator from Arizona, if you recall, that gave this kind of impassioned speech about, uh, you know, he can't, he can't um, really... Uh, 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 I, I, I'm, I'm paraphrasing, but it, he can no longer serve under an administration that acts the way it's been acting. Um, and you can watch his speech. It, it, it's pretty touching. Um, so he's leaving, I think, at the end of his term, which is still in a couple years. Uh, so there's that. But he had an amendment. And it, thankfully, these <laughs> excuse me, thankfully, these guys went and did this research. Um, I had to go. It was really hard to find. But um, he submitted an amendment here that would essentially terminate the credit for new quality qualified plug-in electric drive motor vehicle. So that's an EV, right? And, um, you know, it, it, that's what already exists, and this is what, where, the, where the credit comes from. Now, the House version of this bill definitely is repealing it. There is a provision in there that wasn't an amendment. It wasn't a last-minute ad or anything. It's in the main text, which you can go find. Um, and, and in there, it says that, that it's getting rid of it. This one, this amendment, apparently was removed, according to Electrek, and it's honestly really hard to uh, to tell what's going on with it. But if it's removed from this one, um, there is a chance that it may survive. Um, but here's the thing. And now, because from now on, what they need to do is they need to, uh, the, the Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, need to come together in a process called reconciliation where they create an identical version of the bill because the house passed theirs sent it to the senate the senate made all their changes you know did all kinds of stuff and now it's totally different so they need to come together have an identical piece of text of legislative text that they vote on and both of them pass then it goes to the president the president will sign it and it becomes law and then you know depending on what's in there um things change um this one for the ev credit in the house version of the bill and the amendment here from from um, jeff flake was that it would uh, it would end on December 31st of 2017, um, th this year, essentially. Just honestly, yeah, this this month. In fact, wow, it's December already. Yeah, so there's that. Um, now, uh, one way that they can do this is that they can come together and they can kind of find common ground. They can, you know, they can come up with a new version of the bill that everybody likes. Uh, everybody that is a Republican will say because apparently uh, reports and it's unlikely that any Democrat in either House or Senate will vote for it. Um, but one thing they can do is they can just take the Senate version and say, hey, you guys good? Good? Okay, cool. Yeah, all right, let's go. And they can pass it. Now, if they want to do this before the end of the year, um, and this is something that I believe uh, President Trump has said that, that, that he wants to, to get done, um, that would probably be the fastest way to do it. Now, I don't know, you know, there's a lot of people involved in the House. Um, and, and so the fact whether or not they'll get kind of a consensus on that enough to pass the bill may or may not happen. So they may need to actually kind of rework a lot of these details. Now, um, the thing that I'm going to say about this is, uh, first off, I, I, I think it's bullshit that, that they're, they're looking to get rid of it. Um, and some people, uh, will say, oh, well, you know, you don't get a, you don't get a credit for a gas powered car. Why should you go in for an EV? And the deal is, is, is that, uh, the oil and gas industry gets so many subsidies. Uh, the last time I looked, it was something like $44 billion a year that, uh, if you didn't have that, the price of gas would be somewhere north of $6 in the U.S., which honestly, if, for those of you watching from the U.S., you may be surprised to know that we have some of the cheapest gasoline in the entire world. Um, and it has a lot to do with all the, the infrastructure that we've built up over the past 50 or so years and all the subsidies and tax breaks that those companies have got. So if you were to truly kind of level the playing field here, everybody would buy an EV. And so that's where I think it's kind of bullshit is that we're getting rid of a credit here, which is actually really small um, and doesn't really benefit everybody equally, which also kind of sucks. Um, but we're getting rid of a very tiny thing uh, compared to this ginormous industry that's been getting huge amounts of subsidies for you know decades now. And so that's where that's where I have a beef with it, right? I, I believe in a free market, but let's like make it truly free and fair and get rid of all those subsidies um, and, and as well as these ones. I really think that that would be fine. Now, 
the, 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 the thing about it, though, is I am not that concerned for Tesla um, because uh, people that are going to buy a Model 3, and this is where this is really going to kind of rubber meets the road here, likely, uh, <clears throat> if you really needed this to do it and you were on the fence about it, then you probably shouldn't be buying uh, buying it, honestly. It's probably too much of a stretch. And remember, the way this works is you have to make enough money to qualify for it, meaning you have to have a large enough tax liability, even if you've forgotten about how that works. So if you don't owe $7,500 at the end of the year, um, forget what you've paid in taxes, just the deductions and, and the wage taxes and stuff like that, then you don't get to qualify for the full thing. And it doesn't actually reduce your monthly payment. You know, when, when I built my calculator, and, and I'll just pull it up here, um, when I built my calculator that shows how this works, a lot of people were upset about it because um, I do have a spot in here for um, towards the bottom, uh, which which talks about any incentives, and I'll just get down to that section for you. Uh, right here, you can put incentives, but you can put a million dollars in there and none of it matters in terms of your monthly payment. Um, and the reason for that is because it doesn't reduce the price of the car. You get that discount or you get that credit afterwards in your taxes. So if you owe $10,000 in taxes at the end of the year and you had already paid all 10,000 or more likely uh, from your normal wage taxes that come out of your paycheck, and then next year you would be getting a small return, well now they would be taking whatever that amount was for you, uh, if it were 7,500 federal or maybe 10,000 if you get additional state taxes, they would take that amount off then all the money that you paid into the taxes, you would get back. So you get this kind of big payment next year. However, none of that changes the loan you had to get or any of the stuff happening until then. So this really is kind of a weird thing anyways. It's not like um, it, it, it's not like you're gonna you know say, oh, okay, you're gonna go to Tesla, it's 35 grand or let's say 50 grand afterwards. All right, just take 10 grand off and then that's the amount I'll get a loan for. Doesn't work that way. So. This, if you were stretching to buy a Model 3 uh, and this was kind of the thing, then you maybe shouldn't have been doing it in the first place. Now, um, I will link to a, a video that I saw recently from um, some guys actually here in San Diego uh, called 2-Bit Da Vinci, and they did an excellent um, comparison between a Model 3, um, a Honda Civic, and I believe a Mercedes-Benz C-Class. I forget what the third one. Oh, no, no, it was a BMW 3 Series. Um, and they did a true cost of ownership analysis. And I've done these before as well. Now, I, the thing I like about theirs, the graphics were outstanding, but they also did a, a, um, a the Honda Civic comparison. And believe it or not, the Model 3, while much more upfront compared to the Honda Civic, was right about the same price in true cost of ownership after five years because the maintenance is, is less, the, ch the, the fuel or the charging um, in the EV case is extremely le uh, lower. So you really get a, a big amount of benefits um, to, in terms of overall cost. But if you're thinking about monthly payment alone, then yeah, th this, this would be a pretty expensive vehicle. So here's what I'm going to recommend. Um, if you're if you're in love with the Model 3 and you you just want to get a Model 3, then wait, do your thing. It's going to be you know you won't get the credit likely if this stuff passes kind of in its current form, but we'll see. You know m more to come on that. The other thing is that you can buy a Model S or Model X right now, and I'm talking about like today. You need to buy this. It's December 4th, and if you were to order a custom one, if you were to do a custom order, it would not get here in time for you to qualify for this credit if it is in fact uh, repealed or, or you know wiped out. What you would need to do instead is you would need to go to a new inventory car. Now when you do the new inventory car, it's already made and they can usually deliver it in about 14 days, uh, depending on your area. So if I were to punch in San Diego, and uh, hit go, you would see. So this is at um, Tesla, tesla.com slash Model S and click new inventory. Um, then you can see them down here. Now these, I mean, look, they're only in, in my area, all that are available are 100 Ds. So they're pretty expensive, right? Because they're a brand new 100 D here. Now with this, you can still use my code and get free supercharging. The discount expired on October 31st, but you can get free supercharging on these vehicles, which is pretty awesome. So this is, and in, in, in the main reason I bring this up is because with this, you can see here that these have a 14-day delivery. Now, the 14-day delivery means that you will, you will take ownership of it 
before December 31st. So no matter what happens, you will be able to qualify for that $7,500 tax credit. That, and so if you want to, you know, if you're on the fence at all about buying a Tesla and that tax credit is important to you, um, use my code. You can get it at teslanomics.co slash TD. And if you're watching on YouTube, you'll see that there. And then um, you'll get that code and then you just go through the purchase process here. You choose new inventory and then give them the code um, at, uh, when you sign up and then you will get it before December 31st. You'll get free supercharging and you will get it for um, or, or, and you will qualify for the $7,500 rebate. So if you're really on the fence, now is the time. And I'm talking about like today, like this week. If you wait beyond this week, it may not happen. You may miss out. Um, and so if you were already leaning towards this, now, if you're a Model 3 person, you're like, hey, forget it. I'm just going to get a Model 3. Then yeah, just wait. Um, but if you were like, I'm, I'm interested in Model S or Model X, now is really the time to do it. I'm talking this week right now because otherwise you're missing out on a boatload of, of money um, that the government could be giving you. So um, if you're yeah if you're in that in that in that realm, please go do it. Please go get the code. Um, if you have any questions after you sign up to get the code, uh, just reply to that email and I'll help you out. Um, as I literally have you know um, dozens and dozens of people. So um, that's my little pitch about that. And I'm curious what you guys think. Is this now a lot of you have already spoken in the poll, but do you really think that it's going to be repealed? That's the big question that all of us have because who the hell knows what's in this bill and there's still much more to come. So um, stay tuned for that. And of course, um, every week when we break down the, the, the latest Tesla news, uh, we'll, we'll be talking about this. So so thank you for, for coming and, um, and stay tuned on that. Now, I will also say I checked on the Chevy Bolt and the Chevy Bolt, which is their fully electric 248 mile range ish, I forget. Um, that one's in stock. And so if you're in a, in a, uh, in the U S, um, and you are, are really looking to get an EV, you want a model three, but really needed the credit, a, a, an option might be a Chevy bolt as well. I did a review of it. Um, you can go and find it on my channel. I wasn't super in love with it, but it is a great car. And so I think it's it, for an EV. It's great. Um, it, it's not a Tesla, right? It's not going to be the, the design isn't super sexy. Uh, the tech isn't blow your mind out of this world stuff. It can't drive itself. There's a lot missing from the Chevy Bolt, but I will say I really liked it. And I think if you were just compare that to say a Toyota Corolla or on a Honda Civic or something, it's a great car. It's really good. I mean, Chevy knows how to make cars and 248 miles is great. Um, they also have all kinds of perks because they're trying to sell them right now. So this could be, you know, a t if, if you're, if the, the S or the X is too expensive and you can't get into one this year and this tax credit's important to you, maybe go try a Chevy. Um, I don't think I would, I would spend my money on one, but, uh, if you rewound the clock before I bought my Tesla, I certainly would have considered it. So that's something else to consider as well. And when I checked San Diego, there, there were a bunch, um, available. So I would imagine that in other urban areas, um, other large cities in the U S that, that there probably are as well. So, um, let me know if you end up buying one, because that would be, I'd be interested. All right, next we have a story about the LA Auto Show, which I believe, <laughs> excuse me, I believe just wrapped up last week, or no, it's still going to December 10th. Look at that. I thought it wrapped up because I got a bunch of invites for things last week. And um, anyways, so uh, here you go. This is super cool. So um, Tesla has their tiny house with the power wall you can see in the shot there and a Model 3 uh, available at the LA Auto Show. So if you're in Southern California and you want to see a Model 3 up close, I believe tickets are like 15 bucks or something like that. And you can go check one out. You can go check out a Model 3 on display. Um, super cool. I love that Tesla's participating in the auto industry um, and, and isn't kind of, uh, you know, doing the Apple thing where they don't go to, to those kind of things or whatever. So yeah, check this out. If you're in Southern California at all or going to be visiting before December 10th, Go buy a ticket, check out a Model 3 if you if, if you want to see one. Um, it's a beautiful car. And seeing it in person, there's really nothing that replaces that. No photo I've ever seen does it justice. Um, and I've been around quite a few Model 3s already. So, yeah, go check it out. Next, um, an update to the Model 3. It finally has a radio. Woo! I can't believe how many emails I got from folks about, hey, oh, my God, it doesn't have a radio. What's going on? Well, 
here you go. Um, now it has an FM radio. Um, and this really, the important part of this, why I'm even sharing it, is because I believe it's getting us closer to a complete software package, which is needed prior to the general public taking delivery of their Model 3s um, this month. Um, there will be some people that are actually be getting them this month. So, yeah, there you go. That's cool. Also, the uh, EPA rating for the Model 3 came out. Um, this was from Inside EVs. Uh, it 310 miles combined, 322 city. So what they had reported essentially, good to go. Um, you can kind of see it broken down here. And of course, Inside EVs is a great website that um, I and many others follow. So I would recommend checking them out. So there you have it. The official EPA data is coming in. By the way, when you see this um, MPGE thing, I think it's kind of a misnomer. And I may be talking about it later on down the road about about a different way to look at that. Um, in fact, those guys at 2-Bit DaVinci that did that Model 3 breakdown have a really good explanation of it. I've been doing it um, uh, the, the other way for a while, but uh, just when you see that, don't think that, oh, you know, 126 MPGE is essentially like a gas car getting 126 miles per gallon. Um, that's what they're trying to go for, but it doesn't really work out. So I'll talk about that um, in, in a future one, um, future thing. Now, my long for the week is that the battery in South Australia, am I saying it right? I, I messed up before, and I apologize to all my Australian fans. Yes, South Australia um, is actually on. Um, so if you recall, uh, there was a bet here um, from this guy, Mike Cannon Brooks, who apparently um, was an Australian billionaire, I think someone told me. Anyways, uh, he and Elon tweeted about, hey, yeah, let, let's fix this issue, which um, are blackouts um, that darkened the entire region in 2016. Um, and they were looking at these things called peaker plants, which are natural gas uh, to, to uh, spin up during, um, uh, during peak demand. But those cost hundreds of millions of dollars to build. And so with lithium ion batteries dropping in price, it made more sense to just build a giant battery. Elon famously made a bet with this guy about doing it um, in 100 days. And they did it. Uh, December 1st, uh, which was just a couple days ago, they actually fired it up. And now it's able to uh, supply power to more than 30,000 homes um, for about an hour uh, in an emergency and supply electricity during other periods. So uh, the world is becoming more electrified. Um, I think this is super cool. I, I it's just I think we're going to see more and more of these things as utilities realize the cost advantages of doing things this way versus yeah spending hundreds of millions of dollars on a on, on a natural gas um, peaker plant or something like that. So yeah, that's my long for the week. Super excited about that. I, I really and more so um, about what it means for the future. The fact that they did this. Um, in record time and for a lot cheaper, and so things are things are going well, and and hopefully this this kind of uh, this pace will continue. Now, next I have something. <laughs> Let's just say I don't know what Elon was doing this weekend, uh, but man, he had some interesting tweets. I'm not even going to get into all of them. I can't. There's there's just far too many wild tweets from Elon this weekend for me to even talk about. Let's talk about these two though. Apparently. The Falcon Heavy, which is the largest rocket ever, I believe, um, will launch from Cape Canaveral and will have double the thrust of the next largest rocket. Guaranteed to be exciting. Sadly, I will not be going. Yes, the next level of the referral program is about to go and watch a Falcon Heavy launch, but I don't think it's this one, or at least I haven't got any additional info. So if you guys were wondering about Secret Level 3, um, yes, I do qualify because we got 100% already, so we get any new levels that they, that they come out, we automatically get. However, uh, the thing is, is that they won't, um, I, I don't think this is the right one. So while it does say Falcon Heavy launch, um, there's going to be several of these, assuming the thing doesn't blow up um, and, and works and all that. So it'll probably be sometime in the future. So stay tuned for a vlog on that. Now, the interesting thing, this is actually a fairly normal, normal tweet, was that he said the payload will be his midnight cherry Tesla Roadster playing space oddity. Uh, destination is Mars orbit. We'll be in deep space for a billion years or so if it doesn't blow up on ascent. Yeah, okay. And then there were some other tweets saying, ah, oh, he was kidding. And then, oh shit, no, he's not. Um, so yeah, this is kind of crazy. Um, now I, I assume, uh, so, you know, not to burst anyone's bubble, but I assume he's talking about this cherry red roadster. Uh, not the, uh, not, not the Roadster 2, by the way, Elon, man, I love your bet your hairstyle now. I don't know what was going on back in these days. I know you're building a business, but 
come on, man. We, we, we need we need to up the game a little bit, and I'm happy you've been doing that. So, um, yeah, this Roadster, apparently, I believe this is the right one, is on its way or will be on its way to Mars. Hopefully it doesn't blow up. Hopefully uh, things work. Um, wow, how crazy is that? Uh, so, yeah, there you have it. Now, um, a lot of you have been asked about uh, asking me about TeslaCon. TeslaCon, of course, is the event for EV fans and Tesla fans like you, like me and you. We're coming together in this web-based conference, so it's all online. You can watch from your couch on an iPad, have a beer in your hand, have a coffee, whatever you prefer. And uh, you don't have to travel. You don't have to pay for a flight or hotel or food or transportation, any of those things. So it's a lot cheaper than going to a physical version. And because it's also online, we have some amazing speakers. We have uh, speakers from Paris joining us. We have speakers from London joining us. We have people from all over the US and Canada that will be speaking at the event. And the idea is to come together and really share ideas, talk about new things that, that, that we've been exploring, um, and, and create a community that's trying to accelerate the transition. Now, it's it's right around the corner. It's coming in 11 days. And we had closed uh, uh, our pre-launch tickets last week after we kind of hit, uh, hit our, our goal. And now we're going to be reopening those this Wednesday, December 6th. And so if you want to be a part of this, you need to go get on the wait list at teslacon.online. Click get on the wait list. Just punch in your email. Um, you'll, get a, you'll get a welcome email. And, and then um, as we when we launch, we'll actually be, be um, you, you'll get the invite to, to purchase a ticket then. Now, the reason I'm bringing this up is because for the people that buy within the first 24 hours of uh, of these going on sale, you're going to get an extra special bonus. For those of you that have already bought, you guys already know that we there have been several bonuses you've received, and there are several more um, that 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 we'll be sending out very soon. Uh, there's a lot of emails that I have to write and a lot of things that I have to set up. But just stay tuned um, to everybody that has purchased a ticket, uh, and, and thank you for doing so. I, it's it's really coming together nicely, and this is going to be a really special event. So I hope you guys will join me there. All right. Uh, that's it for the news today. What we're going to do now is jump over to Q&A, and this is happening on Crowdcast. And let me just cancel my screen share so we don't have this kind of crazy stop sharing. There we go. And let me jump over to the questions now. <laughs> I'll take a quick drink of water. If you are watching on Crowdcast, uh, please make sure to go vote on a question or ask a question if you haven't had the chance to do so yet. And if you're watching elsewhere, Facebook or YouTube, uh, make sure to go to teslanomics.co slash join. Get on the email list so that way you can get an invite to participate in Crowdcast. As you can see, um, we, we maxed out here at 100 attendees. So, um, yeah, they do kind of, I guess, yeah, people want to join and participate. Now, after this, after it's over, you will be able to watch a replay um, in Crowdcast as well as on YouTube and on Facebook. Um, and I'll be sharing out answers to these questions. So here we go. First question from Kid Dynamite, uh, and, and let me just make sure. Can you guys see that? Okay, I know everyone on Crowdcast can. Yeah. Okay. It looks like. Let me just go back. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Okay. There we go. Tesla has already benefited a great deal from the seventy-five hundred dollar tax credit of EV sales. The credit has truly helped them solidify their standing in the world. Do you think other manufacturers producing EVs will struggle more as a result of the tax credit ending? Will there potentially be mergers, buyouts of companies who have great EV tech, e.g. Lucid Air? Oh, interesting one. Um, who might be much further along? Uh, okay. Well, great question. Thanks for asking it. Um, I don't know if, well, here's the deal. I, I think other manufacturers will uh, struggle because their cars aren't as good. Um, and, and the reason, and what I mean by that is if you take a Model S, a Model X, um, a Model 3, and you compare it to a car in that class, um, so, you know, let's just say a BMW 3 Series, a BMW 5 Series or 7 Series, um, or an SUV, um, you know, in, in those same categories, I think the the Tesla Teslas are compelling. Um, you know, forget the fact that it's an EV; it's an amazing vehicle. And so, uh, I don't think it'll hurt Tesla, not because they've already kind of taken advantage of it, but because they just make a really compelling product that stands on its own. Um, the tax credit, of course, helps with the price, but I think the the products are strong enough that it won't matter nearly as much um, as compared to, say, a Nissan Leaf 
or a Chevy Bolt or some of the more lower end um, EVs. Now, Lucid Air is an interesting um, one. I am really actually excited about uh, ab- about their their car coming out. And again, I actually think it's it's it, from what I've seen. I've not been in one. Um, it, it seems to be like it will compete on its own as well, especially with uh, if if I remember correctly, the the base price was fifty two thousand five hundred, which is really affordable um when you, you forget that for the get the credit all together fifty two thousand five hundred. i mean if you're looking at a, at a high-end bmw you're you know you're well above that so uh i, I think i think it, it's pretty compelling so i think lucid will probably be fine um mergers buyouts of others i really don't know it doesn't seem like t- tesla i think has only done that for a couple companies um and it, they've, they've been more aqua hires um i could be wrong about that but uh, i don't i don't really see that happening unless um the old cfo who's now the new cfo um you know wants to decide that that's part of the strategy i think that they're kind of cash strapped right now so after the model 3 starts rolling out and they su- success of that and they have a lot more cash on hand than possibly um but i i, I don't really um see that in the foreseeable future thanks for the question jim mc asks uh did you hear that there's a special treat for early uh reservationists is a free supercharging is free supercharging <laughs> Excuse me. Uh, no, I have not heard that. Uh, I did search around to see if anyone else, and I couldn't really find any any official word on that or, or anything else. It needs to be coming soon, right? Uh, I guess it really doesn't have to be. But, I mean, the general public should be taking delivery here very soon, so we'll, we'll kind of see, uh, see about that. Um, I, I think supercharging would make sense because, honestly, I believe it's a very low cost to Tesla, um, and, and it's a huge benefit. Um, so, yeah, so that would make sense to me. Um, it could be, uh, for all we know, a boring hat, you know, something lame like that. So anyways, thanks for the question. Gary asks, uh, the user to lose an EV tax credit for the same year as your EV purchase does not fully benefit those with lower federal tax liabilities, correct? Like retirees and lower income wage earners. Wouldn't a better way to be a give incentive to the manufacturer that would lower the vehicle purchase price for qualifying buyers? Um, you know, hmm, that's an interesting one. Uh, I'm not quite sure if giving it to the manufacturer would be would be the right answer. I think maybe just a change to how it works uh, would be good. Um, I know that in California, for example, we have another thing where the state credits don't apply to people making above a certain amount. So there's kind of a a, a, a cap, an income cap, and and that essentially, you know, to to kind of do this something similar. Where, look, you know, here's a two hundred thousand dollar car, and you get twenty percent off if you make you know enough money. It's like sweet, all the rich people get a bigger tax break than everyone else, and that's not cool. Um, so so yeah, I, <laughs> excuse me. I think a change to it w- would be good, but I'm not sure um, giving it to the manufacturer uh, uh, would be the right way to go. Uh, thanks for the question, Gary, and thanks for joining me yet again here. Hey Mel, Mel from Bernstein asks, as the odds are appealing to EV tax credit as of twenty. Uh, 31 sorry december 31st 2017 increase and hopes of a 2017 model 3 deliveries decrease i feel better about deciding to buy a model s two months ago yes awesome i and and uh you know i can say i mean the model 3 is a fantastic vehicle it's going to change what we think of when we think of cars it really is going to change a lot about about uh about our world and and our transportation but I will say that the Model S is a pretty damn nice car too, and is better in several key ways. Um, a lot of people have been asking me about whether or not I'm going to get rid of my Model S. If you saw my video from last week, you know the answer is no. I am going to do some upgrades to it, which stay tuned for that. That'll be so fun. Um, I did get my Arachnid wheels, but no, I, th- I think the Model S. Um, I-, I think the Model S can, do, you know, could could is time for an upgrade on the battery tech, um, maybe a few other things. But yeah, um, I, I think that uh, the Model S is a fantastic car. And so I'm glad to hear that you're, uh, you're, you're liking yours. And I do recommend buying it over the three um, still for a lot of people. Now, there are certain situations when the three is just flat out better. But but um, the Model S, in, in my view, I would still rather have one of those than a three um, if I had to choose between the two. Pete asks, Loved your video. Tesla batteries last forever. Thank you. That being said, is there an argument for the longer range Model 3 having a longer lifespan than the standard? Um, As I try to justify why I should get first production longevity was one of my arguments. My next argument for first production was the tax credit. Um, (laughs) 
Yeah, so you're running out of excuses why you shouldn't wait for the standard range. Uh, okay, here's the thing. Uh, the battery tech is incredible. Um, so I don't know if you absolutely need the long range. Where the long range will matter, I think, is on road trips. I go to Phoenix every year. I'm going actually this week, um, and my car only gets 200 miles on a charge, which makes stopping and charging for 30, 40 minutes each time with a toddler an extra, an added pain that if I had a 310 mile charge, I would have to stop one less time. Then that would be that would be a game changer for me. So I think it depends on on, on your needs. Um, I honestly think the $9,000 is a steal. If you compare it to say the difference between a 75D to 100D on a Model S, you know, you're getting actually the best price per mile gain um, of any other EV out there. So I think it's a, I think it's a great deal. Uh, if you know you're worried about the monthly payment and that kind of things, then yeah, then totally valid reason. But if you if you're just thinking, oh, that's not worth it. I would disagree, and I would say that that the added um, that the cost for the long range is totally worth it, and it's even the best deal you can get on a dollar per mile increase in your range for for an EV out there. And you can go check out there's Bloomberg did a great piece on that. So, um, I, you know, with the tax credit, if you can get one in 2017. I would go for it, man. It might be too late, honestly. Um, but yeah, I'm going first production. And then next year, late in the year, I'll probably go all-wheel drive performance model once that's out. So there you have it. Thanks for the question. Bob asks, is Musk holding out on the power of the new 202170 20, cell? Um, and if so, what do you think about the possibility of Model S and X with double the range? Yes, I do think we're going to see new battery tech in the S and the X in 2018. Um, I think we'll see m maybe an interior refresh. I'm not sure about that. Um, but definitely, I think we're going to have to, we, they're going to have to do something to really differentiate between the three and the S. And so it makes a lot of sense to me that the new cells or some new casing or wiring or the uh, 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 moldable wiring things, I forget what it's called, um, which reduce the amount of wiring that it takes, which then reduce the cost, et cetera. All those things I think uh, we'll, we'll be seeing very soon. So yeah, I, I, I hope it works out. And I am in love with the idea of an EV that is, you know, comparable in price to a gas powered car getting more range. It, you know, uh, gas powered cars will soon get uh, people that buy ice cars will soon have range anxiety because they don't get as far as an EV. How amazing is that? We all know that this is happening and this is a technology that is advancing rapidly. So I, I would say that within a couple of years, we'll definitely, um, th that'll be the case. Yeah. Thanks for the question, Bob. Carol, Carl, <laughs> excuse me again. Um, any news on the Model 3 production issues and delivery program? A lot of people are getting the invites. Um, supposedly, a lot of deliveries happening in Los Angeles this year. I don't. I think that we're we're coming out of the slump that they were in. Uh, deliveries ramping up. I don't have any official word on that, but based on kind of all the signals and signs we're seeing, people in New York are getting the, the, their invites. So I, I think yeah, it, we're coming out of the fog there. Um, the, the semi and the roadster definitely proved to be a good distraction for a few weeks while while, while they fix those things. Um, and I believe Pan. Panasonic on an earnings call just also said some stuff about this that um, the machines in the Gigafactory would uh, were coming online and that that was kind of a big holdup. So I think we're there. I think we're we're really at the be we're at the beginning, but you know, it, uh, hopefully it'll be smooth sailing from here. Thanks for the question. Uh, Jim asks, "What's the latest on Elon sending a road trip to Mars in the next SpaceX launch?" I don't think it's a joke. I saw somebody said, oh, he's a joke. And then I saw another one that said, nope, not kidding. So we'll see. Um, yeah, yeah, I think it'll be happening. Um, crazy, crazy. Vic asks, what's the latest on the roadster going to Mars? Yeah, there you go. As far as I know, uh, it's happening. Thanks for the question. Ian, um, if I forego the enhanced autopilot features of my Model 3, what will I be missing? Will I still have the blind spot sensors, lane guidance, and proximity warnings? I don't think you will. I think those are part of what they call the convenience package, the EAP convenience package. Um, I would get it, uh, especially if you drive a lot. You know, For me, it, 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 it's a hard sell because I work from home. You know, I, I don't actually have to drive to work and do all that stuff. So, yeah. But uh, but certainly, um, if you if you drive on a regular basis, I would definitely get it. Um, totally worth it. Yeah, thanks. Bernard burned. Um, we heard now from a few sources that lithium ion resources for rich 
uh, resources rich for EVs, but do they also rich for something like container ships and other really big stuff? Uh, I'm not sure what you're asking. We heard now from a few sources that the lithium ion resource is rich for EVs, but do they also rich for something? Uh, yeah, so uh, I don't know about big stuff. Uh, you know, I would check out Robert Llewellyn's show, Fully Charged. I think he did some stuff with uh, this island on the UK that's doing some really wild stuff with, with, with giant batteries. Um, I, I think the biggest thing is going to be the actual grid scale backup batteries. I know we have a few in California that have been installed. Um, the island of Tau, American Samoa, Kauai, the island in Hawaii also has a giant one. Um, yeah, the, the one in South Australia just came online. I think that's probably going to be the biggest things. Ships and all that, I'm not sure. Um, but yeah, possibly in the future. Thanks for the question. I don't like how they lump bills together. Are they lazy or is there a reason for it? Uh, yeah, I don't know. Um, probably because it's so damn hard to get anything passed that that's why they lump them together. I agree, though. It is kind of uh, fraudulent is maybe the right term on, on how, how you know, you, you pass a tax plan, which then uh, affects health care because they make a cut. It's weird. I, I don't get it. I think it's broken. Hopefully we can fix it. Brian asks, I don't think of it like the EVs have a positive externality. I think of it like gas cars have a negative externality. So there should be a tax on gasoline cars, a carbon tax. I am with you on that. I think that we would be highly effective in an effort to get people to buy EVs. There's actually a great, and who did it, Vox or somebody, um, where I think it was like President Reagan's uh, a, uh, chief of chief economist or somebody, economic advisor, um, is the one leading the charge for a carbon tax. And uh, on the flip side, I love this because you would, you would, uh, I'm in favor of what's called a Pergovian tax, and this is essentially it, where you would tax things like carbon, which have a broader effect on the world than the just the production and consumption of it. And then you could eliminate things like the income tax and, and, um, and, and corporate taxes because we want people to make money. So I, I would be totally in favor of a carbon tax, and I think that that's a great plan. Um, unfortunately, as you know, they pulled it out of the Paris Climate Agreement um, in, in Leonardo. DiCaprio's movie he talked about it a lot I agree I think um that that like we need to keep still work towards that because that that that'll really be when, when it makes sense um but and the logic is there I, I'm a firm believer in the logic so yeah there you go uh Jeremy asks Ben because of my work uh commitments and my time zone New Zealand is not practically watch a Teslacon live what provision if there I want to watch it at a more suitable time for my part of the world well hey thank you for joining and for the question uh, it's available um, you can watch it here on Crowdcast um, so you should get uh, a follow up email after this is done and then also on YouTube uh, it'll be available uh, later in the day um, so you can watch it just you know um, whenever uh, whenever I guess is a good time for you on YouTube um, as a replay um, thanks for joining and thanks for the question gary asks uh <clears throat> yeah uh th so gary asks do you think the 1400 satellite spacex is planning to send up will be for tesla car network or for internet provider income yeah so you can actually i just did a video on this um just a couple weeks ago and uh i think uh pamela cooper i think is the one that's leading this for spacex if i if i recall correctly um she had some really interesting comments and in they're you know public record because they were in front of a uh um and in front of a committee or something in congress and so anyways um I, I think the car network the cars would totally use it that would make a lot of sense um and they only need 800 um to get it going um however i'm not sure if the cars will be able to pick up the signal um, because as somebody that corrected me i think in the video i said hey you need um uh, you need a satellite dish but that w that's not true you need um a different kind of uh radio antenna i forget what it was um and he said it looks kind of like a pizza box and so so uh, the question is whether or not the cars will be retrofitted or will be added to them. Because as they currently work, it's not like just a new cell signal that you can pick up. You'd have to install some, <coughs> excuse me, some pretty big hardware. And so, yeah, what I think it's a great idea. Whether or not it's technically feasible um, is, I, I guess, a bit beyond my my, my knowledge. Um, but I, I would love that um, if that were if that were possible. 
Uh, Sunil asks, for Model 3, if we wait for dual motor all-wheel drive, do you anticipate the package might be $5,000? Yes, I do. Um, a lot of the other stuff is the, the same price as the Model S, and so I, I would not be surprised if it were $5,000. Some more knowledgeable friends of mine um, have argued that it would be less. I guess Elon tweeted that it would be less. Um, so $4,999 maybe. 4,000, may, may, maybe on the good end. Yeah, but I would say that it'll be between four and 5,000. I, I can't imagine being more, um, but yeah. And I, and I am planning on getting one. Um, so so I'll have my Model 3 that I'm getting as soon as I can, um, get rid of my wife's gas car, and I will drive that. She'll drive the Model S. We'll kind of have fun with that, um, do lots of videos, share it, kind of have fun. And then um, what we'll end up doing is then getting selling that one and then getting the all-wheel drive performance model when that comes out later next year. So stay tuned for all of that. Okay, well, thank you, everyone, for joining me. Um, and uh, if you aren't on the email list, go to teslanomics.co to make sure to get on that so you can be a part of this discussion in the future. Um, and I wish you all a good rest of your Monday. And lastly, remember, when you free the data, your mind will follow. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you back here next time.